It's been said that the average person gets around 960 months on this earth. That's about 29,000 days. And hey, I've been here over 21,000 already, which means I've lived 72% of the average life expectancy. Man, where have the days gone? Oh well, sounds like it's time to pull out another bucket list item. What will it be today? Come with us as we ride one of the most unique highways in the United States, the Overseas Highway. It's a 113 mile stretch that travels over a chain of coral and limestone islands that's connected by more than 40 bridges, one being seven miles long. There are no rain checks down here. For the sun, well, it shines more than 300 days a year. Stay tuned as we ride to the southernmost point of the continental United States. That and more as we ride to Key West. Welcome to the channel. We are already 500 miles into the ride. And let me tell you, yesterday, many of those miles was in a driving rainstorm and we were glad to see the sunshine today, no doubt about it. Today's gonna be a relatively short ride. It's about 300 miles and we're again south of Tampa. So our first stop in the Keys is gonna be Key Largo. Up and meet a dear friend of ours who lives in the area and we expect a beautiful ride today and some beautiful scenery. So you ready to go over here, David? Yeah, man, let's do it. So we loaded up the bikes and departed Bradenton, Florida with beautiful clear skies. Man, what a difference a day can make regarding the weather. And just a short time later, we were riding through the middle of the Florida Everglades. It's on a stretch called Alligator's Alley. Be sure and check your fuel mileage if you take this route. We just passed a sign that read the next gas station is 50 miles away. The bikes were humming, enthusiasm high. Even the palm trees shook in the high winds, cheering us on like cheerleaders when their team takes the field. As we slipped down the west side of Miami, we reached the turnpike to Homestead and Key West. And not long after, we come to the Teal Wall Divider. It's a signal that you're leaving the mainland and entering into the Florida Keys. Now, time to take in some beautiful scenery. We have reached our destination for the day, Key Largo. And now a quick stop to check into the hotel and then to meet. Actually met up with our friend Big E who lives here in the Keys. And uh, he's gonna take us to a special place that's right behind us. Where are we gonna go here? We're gonna go to uh, the Caribbean Club or like we like to call it in the Keys, the Crib. Uh, this is where the famous 1948 film Key Largo was filmed with Humphrey Bogart. We go inside, it's an old Tommy place, a uh, cash only bar. Great place to hang out with a beautiful view of the, uh, the bay out back. The Caribbean Club is a Key Largo landmark, built in 1938 to serve fishermen of modest means. It used to have a hotel and a kitchen attached, but was destroyed by fire many years ago. Today, the current owners just keep it as a bar for drinks, live music, and of course, beautiful waterfront views. Inside, you can see the simple but alluring atmosphere with its visible reminders of a bygone era. As Eric stated, some of the movie Key Largo was filmed here. Here, Bogart and Bacall pose for pictures. 
and that tradition has carried on, most recently serving as a filming location for the Netflix original series, Bloodline. After we enjoyed the atmosphere of the Caribbean Club, Eric took us next door to the Big Chill restaurant for some dinner. It's owned by Hall of Fame football coach and Island Marauder resident, Jimmy Johnson. And we enjoyed the rest of the evening with great food and a great view. He did some more riding later that evening, but nothing to show on video. But today we're going to ride to Key West. Now here in the Keys, they sort of live by or go by mile markers. We're at mile marker 94. We're going to ride to mile marker 70, right, David, the Robbies? I thought it was 77. Maybe 77. So let's check that out, and then we'll ride on into Key West. As just mentioned, our next stop is Robbies located in Island Marotta. As we depart Key Largo, we begin leapfrogging some of the 40 islands as we roll on this modern wonder of magic carpet called the Overseas Highway. With the sparkling Atlantic Ocean to our left and the aquamarine Gulf of Mexico on the right. And then Robbie's comes into sight, just over the bridge up on the right. All right, so we just made it here to Robbie's, and I'll show you the beautiful scenery where you get to eat. Then we're going to take a look around here. They got a lot of things we'd look at. Here you can enjoy good food with some amazing views as well. And if you don't prefer eating on the dock, well, you can take a table seaside under a canvas of trees providing perfect shade. If you want to cash in on some souvenirs, you'll find just about anything Florida Keys related here. After breakfast, I wanted the guys to feed the tarpon. But today it wasn't meant to be. Rather, it was invasion of the pelicans. So much so, the tarpon didn't seem as plentiful as they were on my last trip. And they seemed to be a little hesitant to jump for the fish with all the commotion around. I'm jumping in there. If I can get somebody to hold my hand. <laughs> Here you go. I'll hold it. Oh well. Time to leave Pelican Bay and continue to Key West. 
as we continue this bucket list ride, we take in some seascapes as colorful as any artist's palette. The colors of the shimmering sea, from turquoise to blue to deep green, all under a beautiful blue sky. Man, this ride is so beautiful at times, the distinction between sea and sky become blurred. And as we roll through Marathon, the next bridge well, it's one of a kind. It's one of the longest segmented bridges in the world, referred to as the Seven Mile Bridge, and we're crossing it right now. Some thought the old Seven Mile Bridge to our right was blown up in the 1993 movie True Lies. But as it turns out, what really exploded was a miniature 80-foot bridge that set designers created off the beach of Sugarloaf Key. After the Seven Mile Bridge, we arrived back on land to what is referred to as the Lower Keys as we pass Sunshine RV Park. And man, it looks completely full. On the left, more reminders of the old railroad that opened in 1912, traveled from Miami to Key West. But after the storm of the century in 1935, its damage was so severe, it never reopened. And now we've made it to the last city in the United States. Key West. Let's take a ride down the famous Duval Street. Duval Street is the most popular of destinations here on the island of Key West. It's the main drag of downtown, traveling north and south from the Gulf to the Atlantic. This is where the heartbeat of the city comes to life, with a diverse array of restaurants and shops and world-famous pubs and attractions. I'd have to tell you the story behind Captain Tony's tossing the coin in the mouth of the fish at another time.
After a ride down to Ball Street, I wanted to revisit some landmarks of this great town, like the southernmost point. And yes, I know it's not the most southern point, but it's pretty darn close. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just got my, my new one came in yesterday, matter of fact. Yeah, 2021? The CDO, yeah, Black Point Road Life. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty, I mean, I'm, it's up in Pennsylvania, but we have a place in Florida too, so yeah. I decided I'm going to yeah. get it, and I'm going to get that Pan American too, that on Oh, yeah, road yeah, one. yeah. That comes in next month. So. Yeah, that CDO, does that, get, does that have a 131 on it? No, it's still the 117. 117, okay, yeah. Okay, bro. Right. Enjoy, man. Going. Take safe, care. Guys. Yes, sir. Leaving the southernmost, we rode by Hemingway's house. We didn't take the tour this time, but we still enjoyed the views of the largest residential property in town. And right across the street from Hemingway's hideaway is the 73-foot lighthouse. Fairly short compared to other lighthouses, but it's said that Mr. Hemingway used it many times to navigate his way home after a night on the town. And if you make it down, try to visit the Little White House. It was used as a resort and a functioning White House for President Truman as well as other presidents. A quick run to Truman Water Park Front, where we see a Coast Guard ship served in World War II and Vietnam. Pretty cool. And of course, you gotta see the landmark, Mile Marker Zero. The beginning of US-1 stretches from Key West all the way to the Canadian border, making it the longest north-south road in the US. But Mile Marker Zero on the south side well, it remains one of the most stolen street signs in the U.S. Later, we grabbed a lunch at Sloppy Joe's. We spent the evening taking in the sights and sounds of Mallory Square. where there is always a beautiful sunset. We finished up back on Duval Street where the night lights up with plenty of things to do and see. We even met some longtime subscribers of our YouTube channel, Debbie and Sharon who are full-timers in their Tiffin motor home and have been enjoying the keys for several weeks. We have absolutely loved our ride down the iconic overseas highway and really enjoy the Florida Keys, but it's time to head back north. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Until then, be well and stay safe.